No, they would they would go Maybe back. Maybe less than 40 Dude, the last team that did that Maybe was North Carolina. And North Carolina is in the national championship. North Carolina is in the national championship of staying home. Dad used to tell me all the time. <laughs> used to tell me all the time. <laughs> Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. Hey, What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Rock Chalk Unplugged. I'm Chris Tehan, my co-host, Mitch Lightfoot. How are we doing today, Mitch? We're great, man. Excited to be back. Uh, obviously, we're going to do a little recap of March Madness. The Hawks are out. It's sad. <sighs> Can't win them all, but... Uh, I, would, I would really like to. I would really love to win them all. I, I really I, would. And I think, I think Kansas fans in general would, would appreciate winning them all. But we're going we're gonna to reload this next year, and I think, I think we can jump into a little bit about that. But before we get into that, let's, uh, let's do a quick little recap of March Madness. Let's look at our brackets. We oh. talked to you guys last week. Uh, I know Chris Tehan has done an absolutely Fantastic abysmal job. job of... Re, of uh, projecting, um, yeah. What's 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 going? What do you mean, dude? I had FA, your, I had FAU in my final four. Let's be real. Be right. for real. No, I had Memphis. I had, what's, uh, uh, Memphis what's, what's, what's what's what are your best takes from March Madness? What are your worst takes from March Madness? Um, which picks do you think were underrated? Uh, I had one team in the final four, so Miami. I picked Miami right. You did too. Congratulations, Chris. I got one of my. I think I had. Six upsets on here. I got one of my upsets right. I had um, I had Furman beating Virginia. I kind of knew that. I mean, I think that VCU and Virginia follow the same rules for me. Uh-huh. Uh, Virginia, every single time they play in the tournament, you just pick them to lose in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens pretty happens on a 50-50 basis. We're going to pick one right. And then the VCU rule, like, obviously, they're going to upset somebody. That didn't work out this year. But uh, those are my two only really good picks. Besides that, I literally think I picked every game wrong. I I I uh I want to talk a little bit about Purdue. That was insane. Oh, Fairly God. Dickinson. How do you lose to like? And they really don't get me wrong. Fairly Dickinson. They, those guys deserve to win that game. Yeah. They they played really well. They were well coached. No, they kicked their ass. Like yeah, they, they, they they beat them they, up. They beat them up. At the same point in time, this is the worst loss in NCAA tournament history. Because don't get me wrong, UNBC beat Virginia, but. Fairly Dickinson wasn't even supposed to make the NCAA tournament. They were the consolation prize because the actual winner of their league hadn't been in Division I for more than three years. So that means that that team would have beat Purdue by 40, 45? Dude, it does, I mean, if, if the math's mathing, then they I would mean, have lost by 100. Yeah, and so they were lucky. I didn't, I mean, I said it last time. I thought Purdue was going to lose to Memphis. That's what I picked in my bracket. I never thought Purdue was that good. Mm-hmm. I think that teams played off of them way too much and tried to, like, be like, okay, like, Let's let Edie beat us. And they showed that, like, hey, if you put pressure on those guards and let the ball go inside, like, they have no way. I don't think people to understand how, how hard it is to score when you're being front and backed. Like, if yeah, but you have guards to have people that can get you, the, they, you have to have people that can get you the ball. And if oh, yeah. the guards can't take that pressure off of you and make, make them come out, make the defenders come out to them, then it's really hard for someone, even if you are seven foot four, seven foot five. To score on the inside. Yeah, and he kind of he kind of lost control of the game there a little bit. They were turning the ball over so much at the end. I think Edie got stripped what two or three times uh-huh. holding the ball at top and it, like just looks soft. Does this uh, does this concern you about Matt Painter? I mean, they've lost to a thirteen, a fifteen, and now a sixteen. Like, does that is is that is is Painter on the hot seat? Yes, and so I have one one thing. Like, I actually was pissed off watching this. So you're you're down two. To a 16 seed, you're the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. You're down two or whatever with 30 seconds. They left. were the fourth number one overall seed. They were. They were yeah, they the were the fourth first. number one seed. Yeah. I think they're the first. Uh, okay. Either way, you're Houston, number one. It was seed. Alabama, Houston, Kansas. Correct. Okay, but at least you're you're number one seed. <laughs> that is okay. Whatever. <laughs> That's all that matters in this situation. You're playing a 16 seed. You're down. They're kicking your ass, and you're down two with 30 seconds left, and you get the ball and you call a timeout. And the play that Matt Painter draw, draws up is to get them running into their guy setting a screen and getting a defensive charging foul. That, what? That right there. That right Cue there. Cue it up. Show the clip. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I lost my mind. If I was the athletic director at Purdue, <laughs> I would have I would have, I would have showed up. Fairly Dickinson coach. No, I would have this showed up. I would have showed up to the postgame interview as Matt Painter and been like, yeah, that bum's gone. That was so dumb, so We're soft. not saying Matt Painter's a bum. He's hot. 
I'm, I'm getting aggressive. Chris is I'm upset. Getting, I'm getting really aggressive <laughs> and upset. But that, I mean, that pissed me off. Like, you know, like that was against everything Coach Self said. Like, I would have paid money to be in a room with Coach Self watching that game. He would have actually been upset. He would, his, upset. his head would have literally exploded. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how you drop a play to, how you drop a play to try and have the ref make a call. Like, when you're that much of, like, you're that much better than the team. Like, it it kind of relates. Even think, like, Coach Self always said this can't take a charge at, at game point. No, and you, you guard. And you can't fall down at game point. Yeah. Like, that's, like, I think even kind of bit KU in the ass this year, like, with, uh, against Arkansas, which, yeah. Kevin tried to take a charge, which don't get me wrong, I, I, it, that can go either yeah, way. Can, but but you're you just can't do that at game, at, at game point. You can't try and take a charge. It can't try and take a charge. You can't put the put the game in the referee's hands because you want to be able to make the the decision. Yeah. You want to be able to make the game deciding play without the help of referee. But also, you're like you're the you're the team that's way better than that. You're the one seed. They're the 16 seed. Do you think they're going to give you that call? Yeah, no, no, they aren't. They aren't going to help you out. Like the fact that you look for that shows that yeah, you were getting out coached and you guys were getting outplayed. And you thought you had to resort to that because you speaking didn't think there was being, anything else. Speaking of referees, what did you think about the Creighton SDSU call? The uh, foul call with 0. 0.2 seconds on the clock. What, what was your opinion on that? I, I thought the refs have been so inconsistent. So damn inconsistent. So inconsistent. And, I mean, I think it was the Memphis FAU game. Like, Penny Hardaway obviously not, was not a good guy for doing this. But through the water ball at the refs at the end of the game, it's like they literally, I think I watched four games in the first weekend that the refs decided who won the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I think there has to be something we can do to make the players and coaches be able to decide the games. And I understand a ref's job's hard, but they're like people are there to watch the players make winning plays and decide the games. Yeah. They're not there... To see refs decide games, and I, I and I hate to say that, and, and it's I know it may be I mean, controversial. You don't, you don't have to hate to say that, dude. I mean, like no one wants to watch. That's what that. everybody's thinking. Yeah, that's it's what, what everyone's thinking. thinking. No one wants to watch. I mean, we had well, we had fifty, almost fifty fouls in the KU Arkansas game, something like that. Like that, like I mean, here's the thing. I don't care. I mean, I'm not blaming ruins, the refs for our loss, but it's like, yeah, it pisses me off that much more because then I watched a three and a half hour dragged out version that pretty much was like a chess stalemate, and, and then watched us lose. It ruins like, the pace sucked. of the game. Like the. the, the the pace of a game is ruined. There's absolutely no flow to an offense. You can't get in any type of rhythm. And often, more often than not, that benefits the underdog. Like if, if they can muddy up the game and, and take away the true the true flow that the over, the higher seed has, oh, yeah. then then they're gonna have a better chance to win. And and I think you look and and, and you see Arkansas did that against KU. I mean, yeah. we can kind of transition more over to yeah, talking about let's, KU's let's, game. Yeah, let's transition over to Kansas game. We'll we'll leave the bracket. We obviously both were terrible at predicting it. Um, I got Mark. I, I had my Creighton going to the Final Four. They made it to the Elite Eight. That's my bad. Um, Miami, uh, Marquette was my I mean, obviously Marquette and Kansas. Those are my two that my <coughs> two guys I had going deep. I had them both going to the Final Four. Obviously, I had Kansas winning the national championship. Didn't quite happen, but um, I think that this, this 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 March has been extremely interesting. Uh, the combined Final Fours for this year. The combined amount of times that teams in this year's Final Four have been to a Final Four is like one eighth of what it was last year. There was like sixty-one, and this oh, year yeah. is like it's. I, I, want, I want to say it's twenty, but those major, and they're all from they UConn. Be UConn yeah. They're all from UConn. So I think this this year's been very interesting. Um, I don't want to say it's the year the underdog. I think it might just go to show I think how well the. That. I, that's what I was going to say. I think it was just a, a, a bad job by the selection committee. Uh, you looked at the Midwest, the Midwest uh, region, um, e- even seeing pictures of, of the T-Mobile Center. Yeah. There was no one there. Like, no one there. The, the, the pictures are from Power and Light of what it was like at the Big 12 tournament versus what it was like this past week have been abysmal. Like, there's no one there, and, and I think that just goes to show that <coughs> – that was a swing and a miss by the NCAA, and they, uh, and they, uh, they, they deserve to, to have the best the, the fans that deserve to be there. I think Kansas deserved to be there over Houston. Yeah, and I, I also think that, I mean that obviously doesn't play like we would have given the same matchup. We probably still would have lost it. Mm-hmm. Hey, whatever. Mm-hmm. We're not saying that's the reason we didn't get there. But I think that like they did a big swing and miss, and they're gonna miss. They're gonna lose a lot of money this year because they seeded it wrong. They seeded FAU has thirty four wins. Don't they have the most wins with thirty five? How wins? the hell is FAU they're a nine seed? Like then you got um, SDSU. Like I mean, there's just like 
it was like there's a bunch of seedings that sat, you sat there and you scratched your head being like, okay, so oh, why are these two guys playing way too early and why are these two teams The highest playing seed we here? have in this year's Final Four is a three seed. Yeah. How? Like, we have a three seed, FAU's a, a nine or an eight, is that FAU's a nine or an eight seed? Nine seed. They're the nine They're seed. a nine, we have an, a three seed, a nine seed. A six seed? Five a five seed? seed and... A four seed. A four seed. And UConn's a four seed. And Houston's the third overall, fourth, second overall number one seed, and they were one and two against ranked teams all year. Unreal. Like I, I just don't, I, I just don't understand how. You and maybe we're just babbling and just kind of upset about it, but, but that's my opinion end, on from it. From from a purely financial standpoint, how does the NCAA swing and miss that bad? Like you, they, oh, yeah. they, they have the, they have the opportunity to have so many, so many more tickets bought, so many more merchandise, so much more merchandise bought with with fans being there. And this just, just didn't happen. I also so. think that, I mean, you obviously don't have to, like, just give a one seed to a team in a region. But I don't think there should be, like, hey, the one, the number one overall seed gets the West. The number two overall seed gets the Midwest. Like, mm-hmm. no. I think, hey, if Kansas is going to be a one seed, you give them the Midwest. Hey, if, if uh, North Carolina is going to be a one seed, you give them the East. Nick, you, you, you like give it to where, because they've worked hard, they've done their part all year, and they've earned the right to be a number one seed. So if they, if they are... Local to that area, they should have that region. Well, more people are going to travel. You're going to make more money. I mean, it's stupid. K State Manhattan played in for their second round. Obviously, they're a three seed, so it doesn't really matter. But they flew to New York. Do you think it would have been a little bit different if K State would have played in Kansas City? I mean, yeah, that would have probably been like a 75% home game, mm-hmm. but power and light would have been popping. I mean, more people would have probably came. Like, yeah. it would have just been, I think, overall a better experience. I think that's something they'll figure out. Their TV views are still going to be up because it's been a very exciting, like, the games are still great, but I think. Financially, to those cities, people who put their put the effort in and spent the money and taxes and other different things to put those events on, I think they're going to be very disappointed in their returns. And I think that uh, there's going to be some changes made to the selection committee and every different a uh, bunch of different things. I don't know if we'll hear about them, but I think that behind hey, closed door, to yeah, they'll 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 say something about this year. I think they swung and missed. Not just because Kansas is out. I just think that it's just such a weird, odd year, which is what you want for March Madness, but probably not to this. Yeah, extent. It's, a, it's a step too far. Yeah. Uh, Next, next thing I want to talk about, as much as it pains you to say this, I want to talk a little bit about Kansas State and a little bit about Texas. Um, first off, Kansas State, amazing run in March Madness. They, uh, they we got to play. The, we got to keep this short. We're still a Kansas podcast. Yeah, this is, this is a Kansas podcast. We have our flowers to Marquise. Yeah, Marquise Noel is unreal. Like, he's I, a bucket. I have never said a anything dog. good about Kansas State in my life. But he's a dog. That man may have put on one of the more impressive NCAA tournament performances I've ever Every seen. Every time he shot... I felt like it was going in. Well, and then he also just assisted. Like, every every point that was scored in the game, like, well, Marquise Noel your, did it. What is your opinion on, should Kansas, like, after Kansas is, was out in the NCAA tournament and they're watching Kansas State play, no. should they have no. been supporting them? Should they have been cheering, cheering for FAU? What's your take? I don't, I mean, I don't think there should be cheering for them, but I don't think you turn to a Kansas State fan. Like, you can say all the whole KU, whatever fan, but, like, no one does that for us. And in yeah. my opinion, like, that's just kind of like, hey, I'm not... I hate them, so I'm not yeah. gonna wish they win. If they played a team I hated more, yeah, I would, I would kind of cheer for K State, being like, okay, yeah, like I would rather see them win. It still uh-huh. would hurt for, to see me. That's my opinion. I've been I a think lifelong like a, Kansas fan. From so. a pure, from a basketball purist perspective, I think watching Marquise play and I mean him and Johnson, they had they had a great tandem. So that was that was fun to see that run. Well, Obviously, I, wish I could watch them without the purple and the K State. Yeah, <laughs> then I would have really liked. Like, I would have been like, <laughs> if, if, if they're playing for like any other school, it'd be like, except for Missoula, it'd be like, okay, cool, like, awesome. Or Texas, or Texas, Texas up there. Speaking of Texas, moving on to Texas, Rodney Terry, five year oh, contract. Yeah. I think that's five deserved. year. Five year. I, I think that's that deserved. Stuff. I think that's oh, deserved. I think he, so he, he did he did an unreal job. I mean, going into a spot with the amount of controversy that was surrounded in, the, the Chris Beard season. situation. In season, yeah, that's mind the hard you, part. like this is that, that's a very impressive job. I've, I've been giving the man his flowers the the past couple of weeks, but to see them make the run they did, obviously he fell short of a Final Four, but fell short by one point. Like they're like they're, yeah. they're 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 one possession away from making a Final Four, and hopefully he can he can have that team rolling and rolling just not enough to beat Kansas uh, in yeah. the next couple of years. And I, I saw I was heard I heard some rumors earlier in the year. Not going to disclose sources, but uh, that they were saying that the staff at Texas was saying that it was natty or bust for them. Like literally, if they didn't make the natty, you get fired. And I think you sit there and like to me, looking on an outside perspective, I hate Texas. I will disclaim uh-huh. that. I have to disclaim that before I talk about any school. This is purely <laughs> professional. 
But, I mean, how could you have had a better year? I mean, obviously, you don't drop that one to Baylor, but that's a hard one not to drop. Like, mm-hmm. that's the only reason they didn't mm-hmm. win the Big 12. Besides that, they did. They had one of the better they seasons. They outperformed everybody's expectations. They beat our ass twice. If you, if you, 20, if if you would expand. If you would have told them that, hey, we lost our head coach, who's a, Chris Beard's great, great coach. Yeah. If you would have told them, hey, you lost your coach, and now you're playing with an associate head coach who just stepped in, like, you're going to make the Elite Eight. And you're and, gonna, and you're gonna lose by one and have a chance. You're gonna be. It's gonna be a one possession game to go to a final four. I, I think also, they would have sold out to take that. I also think you think of the stuff before too. Hey, you're gonna finish one game back in the Big Twelve tournament championship in the last game of the year. You're gonna beat Kansas pretty handedly. Then you're gonna go to win the Big Twelve tournament, and then you're gonna be essentially the last Big Twelve team standing in the tournament. I think even if it's like, hey, we only make the round of thirty two. I think they take that and they're like, yeah, hey. Sell out. That's so it'll be interesting. I mean, five years. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty long time for yeah. for, for a contract. But hopefully, yeah, I think they have a lot of guys on their way out too. Doesn't yeah, Timmy, they're Timmy, Howley, yeah, Timmy they're Allen? Yeah, Timmy Allen, Christian Bishop, Marcus Carr, Marcus Carr. Uh, uh, what's the six? They're, they're six man. Uh, they're gonna lose Jabari. Oh, Rice. Jabari Rice. Yeah, uh, there's, there's 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 a lot. Uh, I wonder if Dice is gonna come back. If God, he was killing. He was killing. Year. Like I mean, he, he, he really think, came on. He was averaging twenty three and a half and a ten and a half or ten point six. So think about this. I mean, think about the 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 bad breaks the Big Twelve had. I mean, in in March, like Kansas, obviously Hall of Fame coach Out. has his has his stuff with medical. Uh, you lose Baylor. They uh, Langston Love. They they lose yep. him. Uh, then you have Texas lose loses uh, Dylan Daisu. Which, you, I mean, he was literally, I mean, he, he was playing, he, he, he was, was their playing best like player. First team All American. He was their best player at that and point. Then, and then you think about, <coughs> and then you think about Iowa State. They lose Caleb Grill. He was, he was uh, dismissed from the team. Good then reason. Then you think though, about that was TCU. <coughs> loses oh, Eddie Lampkin. Eddie Lampkin like, transfers so there, randomly. So there's five teams that have major players and major individuals involved that can't compete in March. So I, I think, I think it's rough for the Big 12. Uh, I think for what for what uh, for what went down, Big Twelve performed well. Obviously, I think it's pretty much Big Twelve national championship or bust, basically. Well, I mean, we've won the last two years. The Big Twelve and has. had an appearance in the last three. Yeah, and had a Final Four in the last four. And so, I mean, like if we're playing the numbers game. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, so. it's kind of we're kind of due for it. Love you because you just brought it up. What's your opinion on what Tom Izzo said after they uh, they lost to K State? About the one, the it's two all lucky, lucky shots, uh, and then the Big Ten is the best basketball conference in America. Yeah, still, no chance, no shot. Like, what? What are you watching? Like, you guys, you guys literally gave like all you had to do was show up at that K State game. You had to show they, up a little bit. They didn't guard the pick and roll. They at all watched the whole game, and they guarded Marquise Noel five feet off with their hands down. I mean, did you not watch scouting report? The Dan, the man had nineteen assists. Yes, he's going to do that if you just let him pass. How about the play where uh, Noel he acts like he's arguing with their head coach, and then but that's how much they were ball watching. They were doing that the whole game. I, dude. I, I, we were There's texting each other. Cutting. We were texting each other in a group chat. Like every time they get back cut and we're, we're caught ball watching, I, I I swear it could be five times. Like and I mean, look and then there's no way you can come out and say, hey, yeah, the Big Ten is clearly the best basketball school. Clearly the best basketball school. We had one man score. Uh, be assist on sixty eight of their ninety seven points or whatever it was. Yeah, get out of here. Like, what, no that's chance. like that's a Luka Doncic stat. And I also think like you watch FAU and what they did to K State. They literally just didn't ball watch and got like when Marquise Noel would get in the paint, they would just fly out to the shooters. Yeah, and, and they and won. they knew that he had unlimited range, so they were gonna they're gonna push up on him from and thirty feet. Guard him with his hands with your hands up, so we can't just throw a pass right by your ear. That's the thing that annoyed Coach Self almost the most. It's like. You're just going to let someone who's good at passing sit there and pressure underneath him while he can look over the top of you and just throw the ball over Think your about head this. all day. He's going to get 1,000 assists. Speaking of Kansas State, I want to talk about how the most outstanding player in the East and the most outstanding player in the Midwest both came out of Kansas State's team from last year. Nigel Pack, who's now on Miami, and Marquise Noel, who's still at K-State. How the hell does Bruce Weber find a way for that team to underperform? I think it's hard because, one, they're, they're both the, kind of the same position. They're both ball-dominant ones. I mean, I don't know. Pack may have changed his playing style a little bit this year. But last year, I mean, they lived and died by Nigel Pack. Having 30 a game. Having 30 a game. Like, the only reason they almost beat us in Allen was because the man went nuts. Like, nuts. and that's they, they won games because of him simply. 
in the games that they didn't, their whole team played absolutely wild and Marquise played well. But it wasn't like something where, hey, like we're just going to give Marquise the reins. We have the most explosive player in college basketball. And I think that like it kind of played the same way this year. Like If you look at later in the year, I mean, obviously Keontae had a great year, but in the last couple games he was less prevalent because they just gave the reins to Marquise Nolt. And they were going to they were going to let him carry them as far as as far as he could. And he got him to the lead eight. But I mean, you watch the end of that game, you kind of live and die by Marquise Nolt. I mean, he's firing up shots the whole From game. From 30 feet. And doing it. But and how does FAU find a way to win that game? What do you think that they did differently that Michigan State didn't do? I mean, they 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 didn't ball watch. And they knew that. When hey, you say ball watch, explain, explain to the people that might understand what ball watching is. So when you're guarding, you're not guarding Marquise Noel. And you know you're, you're, you're off he, the ball. You're off you're the guarding ball. an off the ball man. And you know that Marquise Noel is the best player on the court. So what you're going to do, everyone's attention is going to be on him. But guess what? He's not a, he's a scorer. He can score, but he's not a score first guy. So when you're ball watching, you know what his players are going to do? They're just going to go, foom, and cut right behind your head. Mm-hmm. And so what they did is they let Marquise Null drive. Hey, if their guy got beat, obviously they're going to help off the big a little bit because their big guys aren't really going to be talented, but they're going to run out to the guys on the three-point line. Mm-hmm. Those guys could not score unless they caught and shot, mm-hmm. or they caught and shot and took one dribble. Like Mar- Marquise Noel created every bit of offense they had besides mm-hmm. a little bit of Keontae. Mm-hmm. I think that just completely neutralized them because they're making a playoff for the second and third turn, and I mean these guys aren't beating guys off the dribble and creating help. I think that's why it pisses you and me off when you hear Tom or Tom, Tom, yeah, Tom Izzo. Yeah, Tom Izzo said yeah, yeah. It. it. was Izzo saying that, oh, the Big Ten's the best team, or the best conference in college basketball like dude, what are you talking about your team couldn't even defend a back cut like back cut or a ball screen did they you ever let it him oh my god did you was... not know it was coming are you gonna help up on noel and then are you gonna get caught ball watching like that's something that pisses me off like you think the about man the... who had 16 assists the, the game before and you had a week to study yeah, and him. then you give up 19 assists to him like do you not know he's gonna whenever he drives to the hoop people are gonna cut like i think that's the thing that desi sills and and, and johnson did really well is they moved. moved. They moved. They knew how to move without the ball, and then that's some, that's a that's a un, unspoken talent in in college basketball, especially when you're an explosive athlete. When Keontae oh, Johnson is a step and a half in front of you, and they throw the ball to the top of the backboard, there's one person in the gym that's going to get that. Yeah, yeah it's I, Keontae Johnson. And yeah. guess what? If you try to go hit him, that man is strong as all get out. So he's going to body you and then dunk on your head. I do think that the, that the supporting cast at Kansas State this year was improved from years past and, and yeah. i think that i think that's why they started they they made a deeper run this year uh i would consider their run in 2018 when they went to the elite eight that was more fluky than this year's run this this year's yeah. team at kansas state was a legit contender like if they if they beat fau i i wonder what the odds would be on them winning a national championship I, they have to be pretty dang good they would have to be pretty good uh so we'll we'll kind of switch off of kansas state we but i have a question we'll kind of lead this into a kansas way so you look at the you look at the players off the bench for kansas state what do you think was different do you think it was the culture that those guys came in the game because they knew desi sills knew my job was to go pick up that guy 94 feet his job wasn't to score uh, Masood, his job was to try to guard the big as best he could and then hit shots when he was open. I think they bought into the roles better than they had. It kind of explained that. I think that's, I think that has, it's a product of their success. I mean, they, they, they had success. They, they saw the success that playing it Jerome Tang's way yep. created. And then what they bought into it. And they I mean, it's away, easy to they buy got, it. They it's got easy, away from it for a little bit. Yeah, it's, but. it's easy to buy in when you, when you have success. I mean, it's, it's hard to buy in when you're down and out and you've lost three in a row and all, all is, the, the sky's the sky's falling yeah. and we can't get anything to go our way. But they they played well. They 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 strung some wins together. They and, played hard. And this is this is why they're able to go on a, on a run in March is because they they were bought in and and teams that are bought in are teams that are hard to beat. And I think that looking forward looking forward to next year. I mean, we'll be interested to see how they reload. But done talking with Kansas yeah, State. Okay, let's compare them to the twenty like. Not compare them, but compare the way they played. Like I kind of compare them to the 2018 team at KU when we went to the Final Four. Obviously, got smacked by Villanova. Mm-hmm. But you look at the people coming off the bench. You had you, you had Silvio, you had Marcus Garrett. Mm-hmm. Those guys came in, not 
a, attack at you, but not as talented as the guys that were carrying oh, us there. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah, you got I'm in the sure. game, what, what did you know you had to do? I had to guard, and I knew I had to not make mistakes on defense. <laughs> yes, so guess what? I mean, Say good balls for you, screen, you had, Monte, yeah. and run to the rim. <laughs> if you had six rebounds, zero points, and got to play 20 minutes, you know what? Mitch may have been the best player that game, simply been, for the fact that he gave us that boost. Super happy. Like That was yeah. the thing. Like Playing with... You know, if you're playing and teams are winning, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. I mean, dude, if you gave me five minutes and you're like, hey, Chris, all you got to do is sprint up and down the court as fast as you can. Instead of ball so screen, throw up. Yeah, like I'd be like, hey, cool. We're winning. Sign me <laughs> up. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll over. do it. So transferring on <laughs> over to, to Kansas and the transfer portal, let's talk a little bit about the guys that have decided to transfer. Uh, first off, as a disclaimer, uh, I want people to understand that college basketball is a business. It and, is. And, and at the end of the day, people are going to do what's best for them. Schools are going to do what's best for them. And they ought to. Uh, the, the players ought to do what's best for them. And, and if that means going somewhere else to get more time and get a better opportunity, then do that. So guys that have transferred, let's name them off. Let's, we got Joe Gassifu. Uh He Obviously, this is his second time transferring. He transferred to KU from Drake. I think that he'll have the opportunity to go somewhere and, and get and get more get more time and get more uh, opportunity on offense. I think yeah. I think he's looking to be more of a, a an offensive presence than than may have been allowed at KU, and that's yeah. nobody's fault. But that's just how it that's how it goes. I think. I mean, and oh, another disclaimer: every one of these guys that transferred, I personally loved. No, oh, I love them. You I love hate them. to they're see my them. Friends. They're my friends. They're, yeah. they're my brothers. Like they they've been through it with us. I mean, it's 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 really hard. I mean. Before we go go deeper yeah. into this, speak to the like, it you build these relationships and 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 these guys become your your friends, your brothers, like, and to see them move on, like it, that that's hard for people. I mean, that's yeah. hard for guys on the team, even. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard for people. It's I mean, hard for fans, hard for guys on the team. And obviously, like we're older now, we're a lot older. My first year when I see someone transfer, I like I would sit there being like, damn, like, like my know. best friend transferred. Yeah, our best, our best friend transferred. Yeah, Sam much. Cullough left, and we were like, dude, like down and out. This sucks. I remember we were, we walked him to his Uber as he went to the airport. We we're like, damn, damn. I never get to play with my boy Sam again. Like you don't really understand it, but then you do. It's like, hey, everyone's here for the same reason to do exactly what's best for them. Uh huh. And I think that, I mean, I respect it. Hey. Guess what? My in my best interest, it was to stay at Kansas. My best interest would have been to transfer. It would have been no hard feelings with anybody there, no hard feelings with the fans. I don't think there's any reason for anybody to get on anybody's ass, talk yeah. any kind of bad yeah. things about these guys leaving, because they gave everything they could to the to to Kansas. Uh-huh. Hey, maybe they like Joe. Joe is a guy who he he just didn't fit exactly into the puzzle uh-huh. the way uh-huh. you wanted him to. He fit, but he wasn't the exact guy that Coach Self yeah, wanted. And, he, and and I think it's. Completely okay for Joe to seek out to seek out an opportunity where he can be be the guy on the team, and, and he's a great player too. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think one of the guys that it kind of more surprised me than others was Bobby. Like I, yeah, I, I, uh, I, Coach Self had talked about how he was going to be the next great guard behind behind uh, Devontae Graham and Frank Mason, and and to yeah, see that him, dog mentality too. Yeah, and, and and to see him leave, I think I think that uh, it could be a testament to how good our guards coming in. Can be, and obviously you got to think about it. That guard spot's pretty locked up with Dewan, the one guard move, for move, sure. Yeah, but it's pretty locked up with Dewan heading forward. Uh, so having a guy with as he has, what does he have two years of eligibility left? He, t- I think he has two years left. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy to think. He may have three. He may have three. I was, I was, I was really just gonna. He may have three, but because his first year doesn't count. Put your like, as a fan, like you can't get mad at Bob because put yourself in his his shoes. Is Coach Self gonna gonna play Dewan or is he gonna sub Dewan out of the game to put you in? Like it's I understand that, and I think Bobby wants to get closer to home and and, and play for somebody around North Carolina where he's from, yep. and, and uh, hopefully he gets a chance. Maybe North uh, <clears throat> North Carolina State. Like I think I think places I think, like that would be would be cool for him to go play for. I don't and, think anybody's really gonna downgrade that much. No one's gonna be going because they couldn't compete at this high level. No. I think, and you can correct me. It's all about finding the right fit. Yeah, and I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, Juan was unexpected, not unexpected, but to be like to take the step he did the last two years was kind he of a step like, from last year. Like he played really, or he was he was better than the last year. He played really well. He played yeah. awesome, but he just took a jump to this year. So Juan made that unexpected jump, and then you look here and hey, we won a national championship next year. What do you do? You tell a bunch of guys to transfer? No. Like, you had a great culture, a great team. They understood it. They can teach these younger guys if we needed them to. 
how to play. And we thought that we could we could play the way we did with with two smaller two guards. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously we had Kevin and Grady at the starters, but when you come off the bench and you bring Bobby and Joe, you just don't get the athletes that you did. And the I think, size that you, yeah. that you have in your starting group. I mean, and we ultimately forward. ultimately ultimately you want the people who are coming off the bench to be very similar to the people you have in the game, so you don't have to change the style of play that yeah. you have going on. That makes that makes your life a lot easier if you don't have to change your style of play. Yeah, and um, I also think that hey, there, we had a great season. We were a number one. We were a number one seed. We won, the, we big won the Big Twelve. But I think that you look in the mirror really closely when you're coach self, and you kind of go, hey, could this team won a national championship with the pieces and the style of play we had? And I think his answer is no. I think we were pretty close to our ceiling. We won a lot of games that we probably shouldn't have and got lucky that the league was this look good. I think, yeah, you look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, those guys are great. And I think that Joe and Bobby will be guys that we look back at next year. Not look back at, but we'll watch them at their respected universities. Joe's going to be a guy that probably averages above 14-15. Yeah, 14-15 a game. And Bobby's Bobby going to be a guy that guy. 12 and 12 and Six assists, like, and, two, and maybe a turnover. He's gonna have a three to one turnover ratio. Yeah, he's gonna be a good player. I, and then I think that I want people that are watching to understand this. Mm-hmm. Like, even after guys transfer, like, we we'll, we still like we're still like friends and we cheer for you. Like, I remember I'll, I'll tell a story. Like, it was my sophomore year. This is your freshman year. Yep. We were we were during NCAA March Madness. We were away. It might have been Indianapolis, but we were watching. Western Kentucky play and Dwight Colby, who had been at Kansas the year before, yeah. I got to play with him my freshman year. Coaching staff and players are like, before our ten o'clock snack meal, we're cheering for Dwight oh, as he's playing. Like I, I think that is like so cool. Like once you're like people always say, once a Jayhawk, always a Jayhawk. Like that is so true. Like we're still gonna support you, our yeah. coaches, our players. We're still gonna have your back. Like we're still gonna watch you. We're still gonna we're still gonna wish the best for you. And I think I think that. Uh, these guys transferring, like, we're going to support them. I hope the fans do as well. Yeah, and I think that also it's, it's important to note that there's very rarely, I don't know if I've even really seen one at Kansas, where a transfer transfers because they're disgruntled or there's a bad relationship between the players and the coach mm-hmm. and the whole team. That is never the case. It is strictly both of them agree it's that, hey, decision. it's a business decision. We don't fit our mold. We love you as a player. We want you to be as successful as you could if be. You're, if your ultimate dream is playing at, at the highest level and going to the NBA, maybe there's a different spot that can give you a, a, a trampoline to that. To that, And they help you, too. Yeah. They, they, they leave. I mean, there's been examples. Well, the, coaches aren't leaving, they, like, the coaches aren't going to leave you high, like, out exactly. to dry. Like, no, they're they're going to give you a list they, of they, teams they think you match with. They're going to put in a good word. They're going to send your film over. Yeah, like, it, it's it's... Everybody's watching out. Like we're still watching out for you. Especially um, winning Natty last year. I mean, yeah. There's a. There's you're a, part of a national championship team. Like you're. You're gonna. Like those guys owed a certain amount are gonna be ingrained in in Kansas history forever. Yeah, and that's what I told all those guys I talked to after they'd been like, "Hey, I hate to see you leave. If you ever need anything, let me know. Let me know. Yeah. But hey, also, you're a national champion. National Don't ever champion. forget. Yeah. No one can take that away from you if they yeah. talk anything. Yeah. So congrats. Move, congrats, Chris. Congrats. <laughs> congrats. <laughs> so moving on to the next one. I mean, obviously Zach uh, Clements. Yep. I think he he came in to to a spot where he was playing behind uh, Dave and myself, and and those are two veteran guys, and, and uh, very different it's, game it's, plays. It's, it's hard as to well. it's it's hard to to displace veterans when you're a freshman. Uh, I think you, it's it it can happen, but it's hard to do. I think you you saw him this year. I mean, he struggled with injuries a little bit. Yep. Um, KJ had that spot pretty locked, locked down. down. Coach, another can, another guy where you don't like. If K, we didn't recruit KJ Adams to be a five man, uh-uh. we didn't k- recruit KJ Adams to be the most improved player as the five man and pretty much be the like outside of the Sioux, maybe be the best five man in the league. Yeah, and and, and I think that Sound like I that said works. before, like. You want your guys on the bench to emulate the guys that are starting and they're in the game. Yeah, I was about to bring that up. Where Zach's game couldn't quite it couldn't emulate be more opposite of, of <laughs> KJ's, KJ's game. game. So KJ's he's he's a freak athlete. He's gonna he's gonna Undersized. catch lobs. He's gonna he's a bulldog. He's gonna sure rebound, defend. Like, Zach's he was, he game was, was more of fin- like more finesse, pick and pop, shoot threes. Like there, there's 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 differences between their games. That's why I think Ernest and Zuby's. That's why they got. I think they got a little bit more of the minutes is because they played more similar of a role that uh, KJ played. Yeah, and I think that also like with a guy like Zach, he's he 
didn't get massive, and mm-hmm. he wasn't the best defensive guy. So if you're going to play with him, you're going to play through him offensively. You're going to mm-hmm. play with him shooting threes. Obviously not what KJ did. KJ short rolled. But also, I think defensively, you have to play a bigger lineup that you can kind of switch five and hide And so him. is Zach a good enough shooter that. to take away shots from Jay Will? Is he a good enough shooter to take away shots from Grady, Kevin? Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, you, you, I don't think there's really an explanation to be like, yeah, that that's it. it, it love Zach to death, love him to death, but you can't. Player. But you can't. And those are guys take away who, shots from Jay Will, Grady, and, Kevin. Like, yeah, and Jay Will earned his stripes. Uh huh. And Kevin earned his stripes. Mm-hmm. And Grady is a five star recruit, a generational talent shooting wise. Who's going to be a, a lottery? I hope pick. be a lottery pick. Yes. Yeah, I'm so, not knock on wood, but I want him to be a lottery. Yeah, and so it's not like Zach isn't as good as those guys, but those guys get the right to do it. First, yeah. Yeah, 100%. and so guess what? They performed and they did it, so he never got a shot. Just kind of is what it is. Yep, and last transfer so far. I mean, there could be more to come. we we not 100% sure yet. Hopefully, we uh, everybody finds the right place. But Cam Martin, obviously, he's transferred away from KU. He uh, got a medical redshirt this year after a fighting injury. There's not a ton that can be said about it. Uh, That's, obviously, yeah, he had a tough draw. Tough draw. I mean, you, you get you get injured and you can't, can't play – uh, as much as you wanted to this year, so. And then when you come back, you come back halfway through the season when we're a top five. Yeah, team I, in the I think you saw like, that same problem with when, with Sam Cunliffe when he got healthy from injury. Or got uh, there's not a lot, healthy there's from injury. A lot, he got he got eligible. Yeah. And there's a lot of examples of this yeah, just uh, in like, general. Plugging a person in halfway through the season once the team already has gelled together is something that it's it is, more often than not isn't gonna be successful especially so. a good team like yeah. it wasn't like we were losing games and we were out of the race like no hey we were heavy in the race we were a top five team in the country so what are you going to do you're just going to try to fix something that's not broken yeah the answer is no you're gonna you're gonna play with the pieces uh-huh. and you're gonna and, let and, them carry and, you as far as they can and and people need to understand that i guess once you already have a system rolling and you got some momentum with the guys you have on Throwing another guy into the works is gonna is gonna mess that up. And you're taking three steps back to maybe take a step forward. Like you're, maybe you're maybe. like maybe like you can take more steps back. Like there's no guarantee. There's more forward. opportunity to take a step back than there is to take a step. Yeah, forward. the risk out the the risk outweighs the reward in that point. I mean, there's a very small chance of it. So um, yeah, that's all, all the transfers. Obviously, we we wish them all well. We hope we hope they find success. Uh, speaking of. More of the guys, new guys coming in. We'll t- we'll talk about the guys that are available in the transfer portal today. Actually, Caleb Love from North Carolina put his name into the portal, and and I saw people saying, "Oh, I don't know if he fits our play style." Da, 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 da. But then I think back to Remy Martin. Remy Martin had a ball dominant <sighs> scoring personality at Arizona State, and was able to come to Kansas and change his mo, if you will, and and give us. Some one of the best eight game stretches we've ever seen. Do you think that that, that could that could be a thing where with Caleb Love, a ball dominant scorer, could could do the same as well? I I think because we lose a lot of scoring. We're we're losing Jay Will, and we're gonna lose yes. Grady, and we're gonna lose Kevin. Like that's I, a lot of scoring that we need to replace, and and we need to find guys that can do that. Put the I, ball in the basket. I understand what you're saying. I very much understand that, but I think that. Remy and Caleb are kind of different. Like, I understand on paper how you say, like, hey, they're ball-dominant guys, get up a ton of shots. They're more of a volume guy who's going to hit 40% of them and be able to get those shots off and get good mm-hmm. looks. I think Remy's one of those dudes that, like, he literally is a power-up. Mm-hmm. Like, the man was so unorthodox in how he played. Like, remember when he came to the pickup the first time? I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, the man's dribbling, like, patting it with two hands. He's throwing fake passes with one hand up while still dribbling, like, looking around, like, doing all this yeah, weird stuff. Uh, I think Caleb Love, I mean, I don't know. I think yeah, there is a spot for him. But will Caleb Love be if able he to did, take the position? If he like did Remy transfer did. to KU, think about like him watching on the scoreboard before the games whenever they do the intro and they, they watch him missing the shot. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's no Caleb shot that he's back. Kansas watching. I didn't even think that. There's Caleb no Love shot. Miss the shot on the, on the scoreboard. And then being like starting at point guard, Caleb Love. Like bro, I can't. There's there's no guy just problems. misses. So yeah, I. I I didn't Thinking think back on that, that now, I might have changed my, my prediction. Yeah, no, yeah. There's no way he comes here because I would never, like, me personally would never be able to watch that. Probably the biggest miss of your whole career, every game before you play. Or he could just be a dog here because he'd be so <laughs> pissed that, off yeah. every game. He would never need to motivate the guy. He would always have motivation from the pregame he would be He would be such a nice guy. Maybe not even be that good in practice, but as soon as the game turned on, he'd, he'd be an be, asshole. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have to be at that point in time. I mean, yeah, that's what uh, that would turn Thinking other, other, uh, Transfers available. I think that people are gonna gonna start to figure out that Bill Self has a plan. He knows what he's yeah. doing. Him and the staff have already figured this out. 
it's kind of explain to them what, what what goes into recruiting and what goes into this transfer portal. So I think that, hey, we have a lot of guys leaving. So we have seven guys, right? I mean, we have, has, we have four guys leaving right now, but with an opportunity for a couple more to leave if, yes, if so they choose so. Jay Will, I mean, I think Jay Will and Grady. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Kevin's situation is. I, I think, think that, but we have an opportunity to lose seven, a very high likely more. Almost positive. We're losing seven guys. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. So, I mean, this is not their favorite part of the year. Obviously, they love winning games and traveling around, but this is a, this is a fun time for them. Hey, they sit down in the office, and they kind of they kind of look themselves in the mirror. They maybe watch film from this year. They kind of look back on certain losses. See and, where the deficiencies may lie and what they can shore up with the transfer portal. Yeah, what they can shore up. And they, they, guess what? They're going to plan out a scheme now. Hey, we're, we're pretty much starting from scratch. We're going to have probably seven guys gone almost for sure. Four guys already announced, three guys waiting, but... We all kind of know what's going on. There um, could be, and, and that's the other thing is there could be more. So like, it, yeah. people need to chill. Like the coaches have this under control. Bill Self is in the Hall of Fame for a reason. Relax, he's yes. gonna figure it out. Yeah, and hey, we're gonna be a great team. Will we be the number one team in the country preseason next year? Who knows? Probably not. Maybe. Hey, maybe maybe we do land everybody. But they're gonna have a they're gonna have their little one through five here. And they're gonna have probably a six man, a seven man, be like, hey, here's our starting five. And the positions that here's the first guy, second guy off the bench. Yeah, and they're gonna have a list of exactly how they want to play for their incoming guys, where they have them, like where they think they fit. And they're also gonna have a list of their top five players they can go out and get. They they don't in their minds, and it, they're right. They don't owe anything to anybody. If they can get better in a position, they're gonna get better in a position. That's the business we talk about the transfer portal. It's hey, the business. They're gonna look at. They're gonna have this guy right here, even if it's the number one, if it's the point guard over, like who could beat out Dewan. If they think that he can do it, I mean, I'm not saying there is a guy like that. They're going to get him in. So they're it's gonna, their job to make sure there's a competition there. Like yeah. If, and then it's whoever's, it's the player's job to make sure they prove why they should be playing or or otherwise. Or, yeah, and, it, and if they don't, guess what? Coaches are going to be like, okay, we have to get little Johnny some playing time because we got him over here. No, no, no. We're going to do whatever it takes no. to win us games and give us the best chance to win games. Yeah. Hey, Johnny's unhappy. Guess what? We're still winning games. We can care what Johnny does. Yeah. It's it's, un, it's unfortunate, but guess what? If we were winning... But, okay, so they're going to have they're gonna have their list, and they're going to have it probably like five deep, and they're going to have their top five guys in those positions. Those would be the top five guys there. Whether they're high school recruits that are still available, some guys they can get to reclass or 2023. Transfers. Transfers. Any way that you can get a basketball player to a university to play next year, they will have it. If if they think they're good enough, they will have them listed. Uh-huh. And so what they're going to do is they're going to sit there and they're going to actively watch the market. They're they are watching film on guys. They are reaching out to everybody and they are keeping track of who these guys are after, or who's who's after doing them. research on guys. Maybe yeah. They, the, the other thing is they 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 want guys that are good, but they also want guys that have good. Good character as well, and guys that are going to be they're going to cult- fit, fit our culture, fit, fit the culture at KU, top to bottom. Yeah, 100%. that's what they want. And hey, guess what? When the top guys start going away, maybe they will check a box where hey, this guy doesn't check all six of the boxes, all five of the boxes. What? He gets buckets. He gets buckets. He click. He checks four of them. So they're going to find any way to get these players, whether they're transfers or not. And they're going to sit there and actively watch through. And if the guys start going, they're going to start kind of not being as strict about the rules. But then you also think and sit there and think, hey, everyone's freaking out. We lost that many guys. But we're Kansas. Do you think that people who are transferring out, seeing that these huge openings are coming at Kansas, aren't they aren't trying to reach out to? Like we kind of do some of our recruiting ourselves, especially with how much we can offer through NIL. Like Mitch, you want to kind of talk about how yeah, that's I mean, going to I think NIL has definitely changed the whole nature of the transfer portal. I think that I think that people don't understand how much it actually impacts it. Uh, if you have a good NIL system set up with successful relationships and successful deals already done, then that's going to be more lucrative for players to want to transfer there. I mean, because at the end of the day, it, it's it's going to be dollars in their pockets. And, and I think that you if you have the chance to come in and be the Jalen Wilson of this next year's team, you're going to have a chance to make 500 to 700 a million. Like there's, you, there's, you can make some money. You can make a lot of money comparable money to what you would make in your first year in the NBA by playing still at college. And I, and I think that that's lucrative enough for anybody to want to, to want to play at KU. I think that there's no better school that supports their, their basketball program quite like Kansas, whether that be from NIL to the fans to yeah. the, 
the culture that is built, the relationships that are built from ex players, ex coaches. I think we saw that at the 125 year reu- reunion. Yep. I mean, the you have Hall of Famers coming back to to celebrate with with their ex players and with guys that they didn't get the play, chance to play with, but at the same point in time, they're just as much just as much like family members with them because they had the experience of playing at KU. So, I think that the the uh, attraction to Kansas is much more than just NIL, but at the same point in time, NIL plays a big part. It plays a big part, and then also I'll go a little bit into like, hey, the platform that you're playing on. Those guys, hey, you have a guy averaging 30 points at Florida Gulf Coast or something, and they're obviously don't get the NBA looks they yeah, do. Yeah, how many national t- nationally televised games are you going to be playing on? Maybe a handful. Whereas yeah. if you're playing at Kansas, you're going to get every single one of your games is nationally televised. And yeah, and you're playing in Big Mondays and Super Tuesdays. You're playing the Champion Classic. Next College year, game days coming. Like we're playing in Maui next year. Like there's 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 so many different. I mean, Big Twelve tournament, like Big Twelve games in general, like they have their own days. Like it's just like there's there's a lot of opportunity there to get looks. And also like hey, if you're a borderline guy who's a great college player who's looking to break out to the next level, like they're gonna want to play on a stage like this. I think that's what. You see really high recruits going to Kentucky's, going to UCLA's, Duke's, Kansas's. It's because those reasons, then you have an IL on top of it, and then also just the fact that, hey, we've had success, and we also are one of the most historic programs of, of all time. So mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, it makes it easy for us to get guys. Not easy for us to get guys. I'm speaking too soon, but there's a lot of attraction there. We have a, we have a lot of liquidity is what I would call mm-hmm. it. We have a lot of things to get rid of, but we also can replace those pretty fast. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of what we're looking to do this year, completely change it up and hopefully... It's going to be a new team next year. I think people need to also... They they need to prepare themselves for a lot of new faces. But at the same point in time, once those people get here, they're going to be a part of the family and they're going to be working towards the common goal of putting another another banner up. And I think they're going to see the amount of support that the banner we hung in 2022 generates and they're going to want want a piece of that for themselves. And and I think there's nobody better in the country to do it with them than Coach Self. and. And the staff and and uh, the fans. I also think that as a fan, we kind of sort of have to get used to getting used to this. Yeah, it's it's the new norm. It's gonna, it's gonna uh, we happen. have an unrestricted free agency now. Pretty much, players are gonna you're you're gonna see players from from schools like Fairleigh Dickinson and FAU and and some of the the mid majors that made it to to. The they March have Madness. Guys, they have guys that can play. Like they, they, they have dogs. They have dogs. They, so they this, may have landed in that position for different reasons. But and they're, they're junior have, guys who've worked but, three years and understand the game. I, I saw the the FAU coach was talking about this on how he, he he guys are getting reached out to during the tournament, and that's just the new norm. Like it's, it's, that's what it is. It, players talk, and as much as as you want to stop that, I mean, you can't really. It's freedom of speech. The players are going to talk to each other, and they're going to yeah, and and people are going to want what's best for themselves, and and. And guys deserve to be able to to be successful and to be able to be compensated for that success. So yeah. I think you're going to start to see a lot of these mid majors that make the tournament lose guys to other schools because those other schools can offer them a a, a more lucrative, but at the same time a, a, a higher platform to play on at a more consistent basis. Yeah, and I also think you kind of you have guys recruiting. I mean, hey, if you're watching FAU beat K State or whatever, and you're on K State. And you see their three mans killing your three man, and you think that's the piece that you need to come back. I want that. Come on. Yes, you're gonna be hurt. You're gonna be thinking about that immediately, and you're gonna think, "Hey, like, dude, they just upset you. They're the most happy team in the world. How would they feel to play with you and be able to be a part of that?" I think that, like, yeah, hey, that's the new norm. It's gonna happen, and especially now with the no sit out rule, that's gonna be happening a lot. You look at the dude from St. Peter's last year going to Bryant right away. Uh There's a lot of guys who played in the tournament. Bada bing, bada boom, new team. Joe, yes, yeah, yeah, it's it's, the same guy. It, it, it's it's going to be uh, it, it's a crazy situation, but uh, at the same point in time, I think that it's going to be something that at the end of the day will benefit college basketball. It'll benefit the players that play in college basketball. And I think it's selfish. I see people, I think Charles Barkley talks about this. Oh, we completely ruined the game. Why have we ruined the game? Simply because we're compensating players because they're able to, to benefit off everything you're able to benefit off of? Anything yeah. ev- any other regular student would be able to benefit off of? I, I think that's bogus. I think guys and they're he- were he- like they were heavily heavily restricted and yeah. you could lose years. I think guys having the ability things. to support their families and having the ability to to put money in the bank and, and and build for their futures. I think that should be celebrated and not 
looked down upon by others. I, I, yeah. I, I really, it, it, it gets on my nerves when people say, oh, we shouldn't be playing. Who, who is that? Who are you to say that? Like, no, you're, hey, you're sitting on the you know how much Do you know how much these schools are making off of these players? Do you know how much the NCAA in one March Madness makes a billion dollars off of yeah. these players competing and, and, they and still, playing? They like, didn't want them to do that. Like, they didn't want NIL. I mean, obviously, uh, California literally put the pressure and on And forced it. And forced it. We're just like, hey, yeah, we're done with this. They're they are tyrants about it. We're done. Yeah, so we're gonna force it. Hey, guess what? Match us. Hey, we're gonna make NIL every is, player in the country come to UCLA and you <laughs> and uh, USC. Like it just may be them yeah. against everybody. NIL is a good thing. I think people need to understand that it's it's a positive. It's it's for the better. Uh, have happier players. You're gonna have better better basketball being played. Yeah. You're, you're gonna have players that have better situations coming out of school. Um, and they're gonna be staying longer. I think that's something that like people forget too. Like there's gonna be a lot of guys that. Drew right. Timmy's of the world. Drew Timmy could have left last year. And Jay Will. Jay like, Will could have left last year. Yeah, and hey, like, hey, they, they're borderline. They had a great season. They came off a national championship. Like, every other instance, Jay Will, a guy like Jay Will leaves because they know that, hey, to get to... Hey, I can make some money next year. I can go, go, I can go play. I can, I can go be a second-round draft pick and, and, and maybe work my way into a two-way or, or yeah, things make, like that. And make money starting off. It's like, hey, I'm still going to make money, and guess what? My draft stock's not going to fall. I'm probably going to be It's going to raise. Like, yeah. I, think, I think that's the thing. You look at Jay Will, and that's a great, that's, that's a great uh, example of, hey, look, he came back to school, made money within name, image, and likeness, yep. rose, raised his draft stock, and guess what? Now he's happy, KU's happy, and whichever team is going to get him in the NBA is going to be happy too. Yeah, and he learned. I mean, and also, like, I think a lot of people were failing coming out early because they didn't learn the stuff that Jay Will had to learn. He learned, he had to learn how to be a leader. And also, when you stay he there, he had for to learn how long, to guard. Like, he had, to, yeah. like, there's, he had to learn how to score in the Big 12, which is not an easy task. No, and maturity. I mean, hey, Jay Will could have been the same player at 18, like the same skill wise that he was now. And the gap would have still been the same in his scoring and everything else because the maturity with the game, the maturity of how you walk in every day mm-hmm. to lift practice the way you treat your whole day like the maturity just when you treat out. your body yeah, yeah like and i think you look at everybody like Devonte graham ochai abaji uh cb came back and i mean jay will like there's all guys that came back and frank mason yeah like hey, they, they changed the way they approached everything through maturity and just became that more more that much more locked in and that much more dedicated and it, it really paid off for those it's guys gonna, yeah and i think that everyone needs to understand that this next year Going to be interesting, going to be new, but at the same point in time, you've got one thing that's going to remain the same. You're going to have... We're Kansas. You're going to have the fact that we're Kansas. You're going to have the fact that we're returning Dewan Harris. We're returning K.J. Adams. Guys that played in big parts in this past year's team. And teams. then Ernest played great to and, end the year. And you're going to have Zuby. There's, there's so many different... MJ hasn't left yet either. Yeah, I, don't like, know, I don't know anything about that, but... We know as much as you guys do. We know, like, literally, like, I, I'm being honest. Like, he hasn't. So, like, you, you, like, you have a... You have a you and very, guys. Yeah. you have guys. So, I mean, the guys on next year's team, there's going to be new faces, but at the same point in time, we're Kansas. We're going to play basketball at the highest level, and we're looking forward to this next year. And we have a Hall of Fame coach, too. So. Yeah, that, does, that doesn't hurt whatsoever. He knows what he's doing. I promise you that. There's, there, he has a plan. He's a man with a plan, and his staff is out there recruiting as we speak. His staff is out there reaching out to players, reaching out to families. It's, it's going to... There'll be it's some come Woj bombs in this in this off season. I yeah. think U.S. will be very. Should Christian about become it. the new Woj? The <laughs> Woj of Kansas Athletics. I just gotta get a rat back inside the. <laughs> yeah. We gotta figure that out. Yeah, we gotta we gotta, we gotta get our way back in there. We gotta have like reporters calling you and being like, I, "I'm really thinking that so and so is coming to KU." I'm just gonna start making up rumors. I'm gonna have Rocket. I mean, do the PFT thing and uh, just have, start tweet random things. We'll have Rocket be my burner account, be like Rocket the Insider, and like have him break all the news and just be like a dog. And but then also just tweet a bunch of random. Of stuff for those that don't know that's from part of my take he has his pft dog, yeah. has his dog that tweets uh, all of his all of his leaks and his, his leaks and the dude literally just tweets like a hundred times a day and just write like on every leroy. three or four yeah leroy he's right on every three or four but guess what he beats adam schefter once or twice and that would all that that would that's all, all that would that's all that matters if i could beat matters. matt tate and gary Bedro one time i would it would make my life or, or mike vernon yeah it, scoops good luck <laughs> okay so hey we, we talked about kansas a lot what do you think about the Final Four this weekend? Who do you have? What do you think the matchup's going to be at, like? Looking at the Final Four th- this year, I mean, I think you got FAU, uh, you got UConn, you got Miami, 
And you've got, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, FAU, San, Diego, San, Diego San Diego State. San Diego State. Brian Dutcher. Is that yep, coach yep, yep. I think, I think UConn's rolling. Dude, I, re- I really think they're, they're obviously they're the highest seed remaining, but they're the team to beat. They, they they've, have been they put steam a, rolling people. They put a beat down on Arkansas. They yeah. handled their business. They put a whooping on Gonzaga. Uh, as much as I'd love to say, I think Kansas would go on a run if we if we beat Arkansas. I don't know. That seems we like may, a we that seems like a buzz saw right there. If you're asking yeah, me, and they're playing they're playing great. I mean, I have predicted literally everything wrong. Like every time. So someone, Chris is gonna <laughs> pick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Every single time. I mean, people ask me on the street and everything. Like, who do you like this? You're like, who do you? When do you watch it? Like, who do you? What do you think? And every time I a name comes out of my mouth, they lose. They lose. So. I'm not going to pick. I think that I'm not going to pick anything. I think the uh, UConn looks very, very good. So, so saying that Miami's going to win. <laughs> I mean, I, I think Miami's a great team. I think UConn just has too much size for them. Um, FAU versus uh, San Diego State. I think that may be the best game that we watch. I think that is going to be a FAU, dog. Fight. I think FAU is going to be a Cinderella. It's going to be awesome. But guess what? They're going to run in. What they're gonna run into either? Like, don't get me wrong, San Diego State's but, good, but if they run into UConn in, in a natty, what happens? Okay, think about this. Yikes. What happens if FAU wins the natty though? Uh, dude, I, that's unheard of. Dude, that's what I. Like, Un- that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't like unheard of. Like, that would be insane. I think they're plus five fifty to win the national championship right now, which is if you would have, if you would have. I mean, at the beginning of the year, it like, was what? Dumb. Yeah, it was probably plus like thirty thousand. I mean, yeah, but you're, I mean, unless you're an FAU fan, you're not going to take any of that. Yeah. But like, just as like a media outlet as the NCAA, like, are you going to sit there and be like, they just broke the system? Do you think their coach leaves? Do you think their coach, he has to, right? He has to. If you win a natty at FAU, do you, think <laughs> you starting, leave? Do you think any of their starting five will be back next year? I don't know. I Absolutely no shot. Enough. Dude, I'll, I mean, yeah. That, but do you I mean if you win a natty and all those guys can come back? Do you just be like, hey, run it back? Absolutely run it back. not. I think, no, I think absolutely, you, dude. Not. You're at FAU. You're at FAU. You're at FAU, and you're gonna go. There's gonna you be guys on that team heading year. to Power Five conferences. There's gonna be guys on that team heading to high major programs. Like but you won a natty that last year. You were you were won a natty, and you're gonna go to FAU. And guess what? It's still gonna be FAU. What do you mean, Effie? You're in Florida Atlantic. You were just won a national championship. You can go back to Florida and live on the beach. You can leave, go back to Florida, but you can go to Duke and make three hundred thousand dollars. But you just won a natty. You don't think the boosters there are gonna be Absolutely. throwing money at them? Yeah. They're gonna throw twenty five dollars at them. They're not gonna throw yeah. twenty five bands. You are tripping. You don't think there's money down in Florida? Oh, there's money down there, but I don't think that there's as as much as there is in North Carolina. But you don't think that the, every they won a national or, championship. FAU won a won March Madness. If I was an FAU booster, I don't have much in my savings account. I would empty it to get those guys to come back. Their head coach isn't even going to be back. They would pay him a bag too. They don't. I mean, what? If you have, if you can if bring you the think, same team back, I would personally, if I was an FAU fan, take out a ten million dollar loan and pay them all ten million dollars. If you think FAU's head coach is going to be back at FAU next year, if they win a national, I, I, I would. I would almost bet you that he will not be back now. They made it to a Final Four. If, he will not if, be back. If, 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 he will not be back. I will bet you everything in my bank account that he will not return to FAU next year. If every one of their players were like in the locker room, so hey, theoretically, they lose the, in the Final Four game this weekend. And every person in that, every player in that They're locker room says, They're going to be shaking each other's no, hands. No, 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 saying, saying, this is what they, this is what they, they say this. This is a hypothetical. They go, hey, <laughs> coach. Let's run it back. We're all coming back. You stay. You don't think that that man would stay? No, that man's going to make a business decision and go get paid 10 times what he's going to get paid at FAU at some other school. And you know what those players are going to be doing after they lose? If they did lose, I'm not saying they will, but if they did lose, they're going to be shaking each other's hands saying, hey, man, great run. This changed my life. I'm going to be at North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, Kentucky next year. See you later. I don't know. I think, hey, I, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just loyal and actually a good person, unlike you, Mitch. I'm but. a great person. <laughs> but we talked about it. At the end of the day, it's a business decision. Yeah, it is maybe I'm thinking business. too emotionally right it's, now. Wait, if they win the natty, if they, if, if they win the natty, if they win the natty, I just think there's absolutely no shot that every person on that team, if they have another year of eligibility and aren't going to be a first round draft pick, don't come back. I Why think you're not? seeing this from the perspective of you're a 
diehard, loyal Kansas. You and I stayed there for our entire careers. But think about it, if you went to if you went to we we all went to Gilbert High School College. Tell University. me FAU's last NCAA tournament appearance. But that's what I'm saying. Name it. You Name their last time. You don't think they won't Name do everything time. to keep them there? What are the odds they make it next year? If they win and bring everyone back, 100%, they're going to win. If, you, if you're the same <laughs> the team as last year, you're going to win 100%. Win, Look if, at North Carolina this year. They did the same national, thing they did last they year. If they win a national championship <laughs> this year and they bring everybody back on their team, I still would bet you the odds of them going back to the NCAA tournament would be less than 50%. No, they would, they would go Maybe back. less than 40 Dude, the last team that did that Maybe was North right. Carolina. And North Carolina is in the national championship. North Carolina is in the national championship of staying home. Okay, well, Mitch... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. This Another, was great. Hey, hey, before we leave, I want you guys to drop down below. Let us know some KU people that you would want us to have on as guests. We are former players. Former players. Maybe a transfer. Members. Maybe throw a transfer in there. We can talk about their time at Kansas. Yeah, maybe we, we, down, but. We, we can talk. We can talk to transfers. We can talk to media members. Whoever you guys want to have on the pod, we're, we're looking media for. Media members. We could do ESPN hosts. We, we could ask Billis, Frischilla, your guy, Frischilla. We could ask a bunch of different guys. Wait, who do you think we are? Joe Rogan? No. We, hey. You're going to reach out to Jay Billis? If you can get Jay Billis on the show, Mitch. I would love to. I think he would be a great guest. I would buy you a new car. you buy me a new car? Hey, yeah. Jay. He's <laughs> buying me a new car. I'll sell it and split it with you. Shake on it. Great. Here we go. <laughs> All, All right, right hey. everybody. Appreciate you tuning in. It's been another great episode.